Hi, uh, good morning. Glad you could join me. Mark here again. Hope you all had a lovely Christmas and uh, things are now returning back to normal. Certainly a uh, lovely morning here. You know, it was cold when I got out of the car. Things about minus five, so it's nice just to see that uh, sun poking its head up above the trees there, just to give us a little bit of warmth. So what I thought to do today, you know, over the past week, I've been using uh, a few of the resources out of my pack. One of those resources were the beeswax candles that I carry. So we all know the importance if we do use a resource is to replace it as soon as possible just so we got it there for if we need it again. So what I thought to do is just show you just a couple of the quick ways of how I make beeswax candles. Nothing technical, I just make them just in the tins here. And also just talk to you about beeswax and how valuable as a resource it is to carry, you know, whether we do carry it in candle form or whether you do carry it just in its natural state. So what I'm going to do now is just get a fire lit behind me, run through a few of the items and just talk to you and show you just how I make these candles up. So just looking around, I was after something just to make a uh, a tinder bundle and a bird's nest out of. But uh, this grass at the moment is just too too frosty, and any bit of uh, warmth that just does go against it is just turning uh, that ice back into water. So what I thought I'd do, since I'm uh, making the candles and making the uh, the wicks out of the jute there, is actually just make a bird's nest just out of the jute itself. Now we're uh, I'm just lucky that I brought this with me this morning and again it could be something worth carrying just in your pack you know it doesn't take much just to roll up just a little length of that and like I say we could use it for the wicks we could use it for general cordage but also just using it now just to make a little bird's nest so what I'm going to do I'm just going to get this fire started I think just using the back of my knife and also uh, a piece of flint and just uh, get this combusted and then we'll get the fire started so I hope you can see that okay with the, uh, the shadows and the light and that kind of thing what I've got here is just a uh, little piece of charred cloth just in the, uh, the lid of the tin there with my tinder bundle and some shavings and that's going to be uh, the start of the fire. Now uh, the way I'm going to get the fire started like I say just using the back of the knife and also a piece of flint just like we would do flint and steel. Now I've seen various ways of doing it where it's only with a fixed blade knife where people would have the blade out and then actually draw down on it but with a folding knife you may find that that's going to damage the kind of workings or the hinge and that kind of thing inside so just using it just like we would do with a flint and steel putting the charred cloth on top and actually using the knife there just to strike down with now this knife in particular certainly nothing special I think I paid around about £4 for it it just happens that it's a, an eye carbon steel or we've got another way of doing it just with this winter sun we could perhaps get a solar fire going but uh, whichever happens I'll uh, get the fire lit but I'll probably show you just the other way as well you know solar fires just aren't made for the summertime you know even as low as that sun is today you know we should still be able to uh, get some of this charred cloth lit or perhaps even a cattail or something so what I'll do I'll just get this fire started off just using the uh, the knife here at the moment and like I say I'll uh, just get a solar ember going just with a uh, just with a magnifying glass so just finding a, a decent edge like we would do and then just using the knife just like uh, a normal steel and that's the amber just go in there What I'll do is I'll just turn this camera around now and we'll just go over to the fire pit and we'll just get this uh, get this fire started.
I say that's the beauty of this duty to just go up quite uh, quite easily. What I've done here, I've just split these sticks down just uh, just small enough just so that they should they should take quite easily. Like I say, all them twigs were covered in ice just like the grass was, so just uh, adjusting things just for the conditions really. So just while we got this fire just burning down here, just into a, a bed of coals, I just thought I'd show you, like I mentioned, just about getting a solar fire started in the winter. Now, the sun is, is quite low, like I was saying. If you've got something like charred cloth, you'd expect uh, that to go up quite easily, just finding the sun. And uh, just concentrating what little beam there is. May just have to just move around slightly just until I find the uh, the optimal. As you can see there, if the camera's picking it up. So when it comes to making these candles, you don't need uh, a great deal of items, probably four items is all uh, all's I need to carry. Just starting off here, just to with a, an empty can. Now empty cans are always worth uh, keeping, you know, these ones themselves did have candles in them originally. You know, but whether you want to use them for charred cloth or if you want to make medicinal salves, that kind of thing. Always worth uh, keeping hold of any empty cans. Now uh, the wax itself, I purchased this from Amazon. This comes from the Norfolk Candle Company and uh, each block is around about 150 grams so I'm hoping that I've brought enough wax just to be able to fill up both of the cans here. Now for the wicks, I'm going to use a natural uh, cordage, I'm going to use jute. I could if I wanted to use a pre-made wick, these are very similar to what you see in the tea lights but I do like uh, using the natural cordage for, for the wick, just uh, gives a little bit of a bigger flame and if you fill up the cans high enough because uh, the jute just soak up quite a, a lot of that wax you probably get around about five hours burn time now uh, these things here are wick pins I'll show you what these are for in a second now these are just made out of a uh, garden wire make them out of coat hangers or if you haven't got any there's nothing stopping you just using a twig so before I uh, start to put the wax into the tins the first thing I want to do is just uh, get the get the wick sorted what I thought to do, I've just got this old Essien sack here, I'm just going to use a part of this and uh, just using the jute, just unwind it just so that we can get one of the threads just off the bag like so and uh, this is where these wick pins come in so what we're going to do is just tie a knot just in the end Just like so, and then if you get one of the wick pins, you're just going to push that just through through the jute and through the knot, and just pull that tight. And the idea of that is that that allow that then to sit just on top of the can with the wick just hanging down because it's uh, quite important about these wicks. You know, if the thing's not sitting straight, if it's kind of bent or kind of drifting to one side, that the candle itself doesn't burn evenly, and you can lose quite a bit of burn time that way. So then. Just holding it just to the uh, just to the edge of the can. We're just going to measure the length of it, and again, just a, a little bit longer than perhaps what we need, and just tie just another knot in it.
and then we'll just cut off any excess. So hopefully if that sits in the can, everything should be nice and straight, just like it is there. So that then would soak up the wax nice and evenly and then burn at a nice rate. And what you can also do then is just uh, twist that fibre just to get it nice and tight. And then once we've got a bit of the wax melted, I'll actually just smear it on that and let it soak in. And that should hold the wick at a nice straight angle for us then. So I've just put one of the cans just by the fire now. Like I say, I didn't want a roaring fire. You know, I've got to handle these cans after puss. So I don't want uh, the wax melting and burning too fast. So, uh, like I say, I hope uh, that one of these blocks would would fill up one of these cans. And again, I don't want to overstack it in, but uh, just enough so that we can make sure that we get a, a decent amount. It's probably just under just under the lip there, just where it's pressed out, just where the lid seals against the can. I'm just going to pop this uh, just at the edge of the fire, just with the other one. So just making sure there that I didn't burn my fingers, just uh, taking them out of the fire, obviously just wear a glove of some description. And uh, just starting off with the uh, with the jute wick, that's the beauty of now of using this wick pin. We're just going to sit it just in the centre of the can or as central as we can get it. Just making sure that uh, it's touching the bottom like that one is there. And on the other candle, I thought I may as well just use these couple of wicks, which I brought with me, these pre-made wicks. And same again with them, you just want to bend them. Just make sure that you cut them just a little bit over length, just so that you can actually hang them just off the wick pin like this. Because this stuff, it can take, you know, half an hour or so to, uh, to go hard. So the last thing you want to be doing is holding it. Until that point, so I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to pop just a couple on this one. And just make sure that everything's positioned right. And like I was saying, if you didn't have a wick pin, you could just use just a small twig and do exactly the same, just pop that on the can. And just uh, just have your wicks just hanging off there. So what we got to do now? I'm just going to pop these just over here, just in the uh, in the grass that's uh, still got the frost on it, and that'll just help these just to uh, just harden that a little bit quicker. And then we can trim the excess off the top, and they'll be ready to uh, put the lids on, carry out of the woods, and use at will. Now we're uh, just going back to the uses of beeswax. Like I was saying, we have got it here as a candle, but we are carrying you know the the raw ingredients for some other things and also uses. Just happens that we've actually got it just with the wick running through it. So uh, one of the uses for beeswax is obviously like we say making the candles but also for protecting steel whether it's on a knife or an axe or a saw that kind of thing. You could also use it for protecting leather goods for whether a sheath, an axe mask or boots or perhaps uh, the leather straps on a, on a rucksack. It's also like I mentioned a carrier medium for a lot of uh, medicinal uses so if you're making pine salves and that kind of thing you could also add, uh, add the beeswax to it just to make it just a little bit more softer for rubbing into your skin. Uh, people use it also for pine pitch when they're making pine pitch it just helps it just stop it from being as brittle. Also people use it as a lip balm, you could use it as a waterproofer for canvas or cottons. So here I've just got a, a cotton bag, I could have got the blocker waxed, rubbed it into, uh, into the fabric, warmed that up in front of the fire, just let it soak into the, uh, into the material and then that would make it you know more waterproof than what it is now. Also use it on a, on a bow drill, you can use it on the string on the uh, on the bow, just to give you just a little bit more grip and a little bit more friction. And also, uh, like I mentioned in the, the fire video which I did, or the fire kit video should I say, that's all using it, just put a, your twigs over it just like you would do a live fire and start a fire using it that way. And also, uh, I've heard where people have had to use beeswax, pecked it out of a candle and actually put it in a tooth filling it had dropped out. So basically, uh, you know, this list is endless so... You know, certainly as uh, 
an ingredient for something or to use the beeswax for other things it's, it's that multi-purpose you know I can't see any reason why yeah why I wouldn't carry it So these I've left now, probably around about 45 minutes, just in the grass there, like you saw, and that uh, that wax is now uh, gone hard. So we you know things are okay if you wanted just to carry these now that uh, they're not going to start running underneath uh, underneath the surface and uh, start dripping out everywhere. So the next thing we've got to do is just remove just the uh, the wick pin and then just trim just the length of wick to size. Just like so, and then uh, just light them up. And there she is. The other one with these uh, wicks that have got uh, the wax coating on the outside. You may uh, better off just getting a pair of scissors and just uh, snipping them or else you may just start pulling them and, and just disturb them a little bit. So with them I'll just bend them down just until I get back home and then just uh, snip them off there, like I say, just with a pair of scissors. And again, so just put the lids on and uh, they're good to go. Well guys, that's it for this one. Like ever, that just leaves me to say thanks a lot again for you stopping by and watching the video. Like always, I really do appreciate it. And uh, I just wish you an happy new year. That uh, will be in a couple of days. So until then, guys, have a good time. Take care, and I'll see you again.